Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a very important technique for mapping the transcriptional start sites and that is the nuclease S1 mapping. S1 nuclease has been isolated from Aspergillus oryzae species and it has been instrumental in characterizing the transcription start site of multiple genes in the early era of recombinant DNA technology and molecular biology. So let's see what this technique is all about. Alright, so let's get into the nuclease S1 assay. The nuclease S1 assay was developed by Arnie Burke and Philip Sharp. The Philip Sharp is the same scientist who discovered splicing also. He was awarded Nobel Prize for his discovery. And this was developed back in 1977. The idea is pretty simple. Here is the nuclease S1. As I already told you, it is isolated from Aspergillus oryzae. It's a fungus and under conditions of high ionic strength and very low pH and if it is provided with some zinc ions, it can degrade single-stranded DNA and single-stranded RNA pretty efficiently. So what we do? We take our gene of interest whose transcription start site we are interested in mapping. On the other hand, we have the mRNA pool. So this is our poly A plus mRNA or poly A plus RNA which automatically means mRNA and here we have some restriction site that we know it is within the gene and pretty close to the transcription start site. So TSP is just TSS, it's transcription start point in this, uh, in this figure and here we have another restriction site. So we cut this uh, DNA fragment so that we have this fragment isolated so it is a little bit farther from the transcription start site and then what we do is we use gamma p32 atp and t4 polynucleotide kinase okay so that's written here t4 polynucleotide kinase and this will label the dna fragment at the 5 prime end okay then what we do is we hybridize these DNA fragment which is radio labeled. We purify it usually by gel electrophoresis first if there is a need. And we hybridize it with the poly A plus RNA which contains our RNA of interest also. So what will happen? This labeled DNA will bind to the mRNA of interest. It will form a hybrid. Now there will be a double stranded portion here but all the rest of the information is single stranded. Now we will digest it with nuclease S1. So we have 5 prime to 3 prime, 3 prime to 5 prime. Here is our RNA. Here is our labeled DNA. I'm just writing it as a star just to indicate that it is labeled. We electrophorase it in a denaturing page gel along with maximum Gilbert sequencing. So this is an old method of sequencing. Now most likely we don't do it. We usually do Sanger sequencing but at that time maximum Gilbert sequencing which is also, also equally efficient uh, although it is a little bit cumbersome to execute was used. So we have two lanes G plus A, C plus T and we sometimes also have a C lane and a G lane separately. And we can identify the exact size of the fragment. This is the protected fragment. And because it contains a 5' phosphate attached to it, its mobility is a little bit slower. So it has a higher molecular weight, just a little bit, about 1.5 nucleotide higher. So the actual nucleotide which it corresponds to is a little bit lower. So this is the transcriptional start site. And you can read the whole sequence and you can analyze it and based on the other information that you have about that gene, you can determine the transcriptional start site. So here is a good example from a study published in 1991 where they were looking at glutenin gene from rice. So they took a fragment which is digested with HINF1 and NCO1 and hybridized it to the glutenin mRNA. Now take note here that this fragment usually 
spans the radio labeled dna fragment spans upstream of the transcriptional start site because you want to incorporate the transcriptional start site for sure so this is the labeled fragment and this will form the double stranded hybrid dna rna hybrid and based on this reaction you can see this maximum gilbert sequencing g lane c lane so these are c nucleotides and g nucleotides and this is the a plus g and t plus c ladder here is the s1 nuclease samples so this has 1.5 nucleotide higher mobility than the actual sequencing ladder you can see that they are reading off the sequence a t g t g a and this a is the transcriptional start site okay, there is no usual code for this so s1 nuclease mapping has been really instrumental in characterizing the transcription start site of many genes. Now there are a couple of limitations to the nuclease S1 assay and I would like to put your attention to a few of them. One is that small mismatches if there are in RNA DNA heteroduplex. So the whole method is based upon this hybrid formation between RNA and DNA. And the idea is that if there are mismatches, if there is less than ideal match, they should also be degraded, but they are resistant to action of S1 nuclease. Regions of perfect U and A mismatch, sometimes they are cleaved. This is not a good thing because it may provide valuable information to us. And cleavage is inefficient for DNA opposite a looped out region of RNA. So if we have a DNA, it is hybridizing to a RNA. And for example, there is a small looped out region here the cleavage is pretty inefficient okay cleavage is pretty inefficient okay especially if uh, actually i should have pointed it out it should be like this like this so outside of so these are both single stranded, but cleavage is inefficient for them. So this was my discussion of S1 nuclease mapping. Let me know if you have any questions or doubts about it. As usual, please like the video. If you found this information useful, subscribe to the channel for more educational videos like this. Till the next time we meet, take care and bye-bye.